All right, hello everyone and happy weekend. Connor, welcome back. Thank you, Scotty. How are you? I'm well. Guys, episode 94, we're approaching episode 100 and we've got stuff to talk about on the uh, on the FX markets as well, finally after the Fed announcement and everything like that and it's been pretty interesting as well. The uh, So there might be less interest rate rise. We'll see. We'll see. So the, the markets are reflecting... Um, you know, some, some interesting reactions to it all. But first off, um, I thought we get the Euro Swiss. This is your trade, Connor. It's been a little while since you've taken a trade, and this is looking not too bad. So this was a sell trade. What would you, was it like a kangaroo sort of tail trade, or what yeah, was the... Yeah, just the, can, the kangaroo tail. I was talking about it uh, last week with you, Scotty. Mm. I said it sort of touched up around the uh, 113 mark. Yep. That I and and showed some rejection and went back down. I'd be interested in taking a, the trade, and that's exactly what it did. It got it on a sort of pseudo kangaroo yeah, tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's uh, right. st- it was still uh, within the sort of rules of what I take. I, I like it because it's following the downtrend yeah. uh, line, yeah. like on the uh, uh, on the slant, and it's also hit a significant level and been rejected at the one uh, thirteen. Four mark. Yeah, so nice. I'm in that now, and I'm just going to grit and bear it and see what happens. I like it on the weekly too. I just brought that up. Yeah. So that's that's it, guys. What kind of sort of in the pseudo? It doesn't have to be exactly um, like a kangaroo tail. If you're familiar with Walter Peters, t- I think he's got a YouTube video as well. He yeah. does, yeah, on kangaroo tail. So give that yeah. a watch, and you'll see, you know, what Connor and I, you know, are talking about when we're, we're speaking kangaroo tail, but. You know, there was definitely a nice rejection there, key level, and, um, you know, Friday's candle was good. That's just indecision. Everyone's just like, well, we'll see. And that's sort of trading, really. You never know exactly where things are going, but you just have to wait and keep waiting for a setup, and that's what happened. And that's that's sort of that, really. So that's Euro Swiss. Is that pretty much break even as well, pretty much, on that one? Uh, no, I've so I've taken it. I took it. It's yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, yeah it's, yeah, it's hanging around the break even mark at the moment. Yeah, nice. So just sort of happy with that. Yeah. Uh, you got in a gold trade, I believe. I did. I did. So um, I I did go. I don't normally trade gold, but um, I got a signal, and I you know I was like, well, let's uh let's get into this and see what happens. So it was just over break even. It actually took off pretty nicely. So the stop loss has moved. To just pass break even, it was like an auto thing, um, and then it, it did come back down again, and it took it out. So um, it did. It took off pretty strong. Obviously, there was um, you know the announcement of the increase in the interest rates and whatnot, but it was the commentary after that um, you know probably helped gold rally a little bit, and then things started just to trickle back down again, which can happen with gold. Connor and I were talking about that. It's quite different to trading. You know, like the euro, US dollar, or the pound, or something like that, because the spreads can widen, especially on news events. People love to just sort of put some, you know, uh, gold trades on, and it can really get quite volatile. Like looking at a couple of these candles on the four hour, you've got wicks either way, a lot of wicks, um, you know, upwards as well. You've just got to be a little bit aware. It's it's definitely different than trading FX, so. Um, especially with the fundamentals going on right now, it's uh, if you're totally unaware of stuff, um, that's also fine. You just sort of trade what you see, but sometimes it can get a little unpleasant if you're sort of in there, the spreads widen, and the stock gets taken out. So that can happen. So yeah, that was that was the gold trade. So we'll see what happens. I mean, Connor and I were talking uh, before we started recording that there's you know if there's less interest rate rises. You know, there's some uncertainty though, government shutdowns and whatnot, and Donald Trump. Um, yeah, there's a lot of drama there, isn't there, with impeachment talk. Yeah. I think he's going to be okay, but it's just uncertain. And, and the Dow Jones uh, selling off as well. Um, I think the main part was that you know that that Donald Trump's been putting pressure on the Fed chairman, mm. and now he looks like he's starting to get strong armed. Yeah. And so, if they don't put the interest rates up then that means that inflation can 
take uh, take hold. The dollar goes down, and the safe haven has always been gold. Yeah. So that's why yep. it looks like it's been uh, taking a bit of a rally at the moment. Mm. And of course, with people taking their money out of the go- with, out of uh, the Dow Jones, they're looking for some uh, a safe haven. That's right, and you can see what Connor's talking about. Like if you go on the weekly chart, which, which I've got here, you can see it reflects that sentiment really. So it's one of these things with gold, don't have a tight stop loss because at the end of the week, as you can see, it widens out to 45 uh, spread on my particular brokerage account. So that can get a little unpleasant if you're a bit too tight with stop loss if you're trailing it in the trend. But definitely, I mean, the weekly candle closed. It's a little wicky, but still, you know, there's it's it's bullish there. It's more bullish than bearish, but it's uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens now next week. Obviously, things slow down a bit, though, because you've got New Year's. Uh, not New Year's. You've got Christmas and New Year's, and everything is just a little bit slower. So um, we'll see. I'll, I'll bring the Dow Jones chart up as well just to sort of show everyone that obviously it's an FX thing that we do, but um, that's the year to date. So as you can see, it's at the low, at the low right here, and the yearly, yeah. So I guess if if people watching this have been following the US stock market, um, everything was run up significantly though, you know, the tech stocks and everything. And then Facebook is getting sued as well for more stuff by the US government or something along those lines. So Facebook's taking a bit of a nose dive as well. And there's uh, a lot going on there. And then you got Tesla, and we could talk. We could talk. I mean, Elon Musk with that. Did you see that tunnel that he did? He actually did build the tunnel. I saw. Um, what, so, like a test tunnel? Yeah, or? like a test tunnel. So a car can go in it, um, and it goes from yeah. point A to point B. And but it wasn't exactly what was promised. It wasn't like magnetic, so there's no real track. It's like if you go through a car wash, it's that sort of thing, and it just sort of propels you. But it's not, yeah. So it's it's a little more less sophisticated than what was promised. But that was the trial. So there's a few YouTube videos on that. It was quite interesting. But he he doesn't like uh, stopping, does he? He just keeps progressing with this idea, that idea. This, yeah. It's pretty um, it's pretty crazy. Now back to the charts, guys. Um, I will just briefly bring up the Aussie dollar as well. So I'm sort of I've been looking a little bit at this as well. Um, I haven't taken a trade on it, but you know, Monday, uh, we'll see, I've got the weekly chart up here and it, it definitely closed pretty bearish, uh, through support as well. So, but, you know, it'd be a wait and see sort of thing, uh, on this one, obviously with gold rallying, it's a little bit of an interesting dynamic cause you know, it helps the Australian economy if gold is stronger. So. But then there are a lot of overwhelming things going on in Australia, which sort of can drive the dollar or the Aussie dollar lower. So it's a um, point of interest anyway. That's what I want to point out. Now, what else did we... Uh... Oh, yes, the USD CAD. Yeah, that's right. I knew that was a chart. Okay. So for all the trend traders out there, um, this is uh, probably the nicest chart. I probably should have brought this one up first. The daily sort of says it all, doesn't it, really? Yeah. We go to the weekly. Um, Going to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're, we're not a fundamental type channel here, so I'm not going to go into like, you know, what's driving this. You just sort of, I really just, if I see it, I get into it if it's good. So I don't look into like what's going on and this and that. And obviously it's a little bit interesting with what's going on in the US economy, but um, overwhelmingly it looks like people are pretty keen on buying this so we'll see what happens next week but again a chart of interest for myself with with how i trade anything else catching your eye connor I, obviously you're in the euro swiss but anything else that's sort of worth no, mentioning? nothing else i was actually interested in the us cad you know uh, it's yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, uh, 2020 vision uh you know 2020 hindsight um but it was looking too wiki yeah with this yep. was a, a, a week or two ago, and obviously now I'm regretting it, but that's just the way way things work. So uh, uh, hats off to everyone who did, did get in. 
Uh, no, I'm not looking at anything at the moment. Nothing's really tickling my fancy. So I'll yeah. just wait. I'm in, I'm in 2% on the Euro uh, Swissy. Yep. That's enough yep. for me at the moment. Yeah, I'm finding the less is better thing because uh, some people think getting in all these trades and getting crazy is you're going to just grow the account massively. But no, right, what, I can blow up the account. Yeah. <laughs> right, it, right. it really... Gosh, it is, and the lower time frame stuff, and everyone just needs to take a step and back. You, um, you know, and everyone's a fool. Like, yeah, we've all tried to rationalise, uh, and even the best traders have. You know, you'll hear them say they're trying to rationalise why the next trade's such a good idea to take mm-hmm. after they've taken a big hit. Yeah, and you just convince yourself. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, you just say some mad stuff to yourself. Yeah. And then you're like, what the hell was that about? So, <laughs> exactly. And you're not stable. That's right. That's right, guys. So less is best. Uh, you can trust us on that. It's not worth chasing the little news announcements on lower time frames because that's what the algos do. They do that. You know, what big institutions, they'll have something programmed and they just program it to take your money. So be very careful. Um that's sort of it on my end, really. Anything else uh, you'd like to conclude with, Connor? No, no. But you've hit the nail on the head again. Now, just one more thing, guys. On the weekly, Bitcoin looks like a dead uh, cat bounce, to be honest. Just got it up now. Nothing significant. So I just thought I'd throw that in there for all the holders. <laughs> that weekly chart is just painful. I don't Jeez, man. Goodness me. But, you know, um, who knows? Who knows what will happen? But if you enjoy just uh, dealing with that, that's fine. But um, that's it, guys, for another week. I hope everyone has a great holiday period. And, uh, again, thanks for joining us as well, Connor. Thank you for having me. See you guys and have a great weekend and a great next week.